If you're thinking of buying the iPhone 12 mini, hold that thought right there. At least until you've finished watching this video. Over the past six months, I've developed a love-hate relationship with this phone, because I love the concept and the experience of a small, compact handset with premium specs, which is pretty rare these days, but I hate the compromises that come with that smaller form factor. But if you can live with those compromises, then the 12 mini is a solid phone. So in this video, I'm going to be covering my thoughts on the iPhone 12 mini after six months of use, and whether you should pick one up. So my initial thoughts are that, on paper, this appears to be the perfect iPhone. A small, compact handset, but with premium specs. With the same solid build, blazing fast performance, and phenomenal camera setup as the larger iPhone 12. It's only once you actually start using the 12 mini that the compromises start emerging like mushrooms. One of them being, like most reviews have already stated, a below average battery life, since obviously small phone equals small battery. And compared to my previous iPhone 11, it was a pretty significant downgrade in this department. But I will tell you more about that a bit later on, so stick around for that, because it's really important. Now there's also the obvious sacrifice of the larger display, and while the display specs themselves are quite good, watching YouTube videos or movies can feel a bit cramped on the 12 mini. So while the form factor might be more convenient, in addition to the shorter battery life, you are giving up that more comfortable viewing experience. Now I also haven't seen too many of these phones out in the wild, like usually when a new iPhone drops, I see people in public using them, but I've mainly seen people using 12 Pros and 12s, not the 12 Mini. And no, this isn't because I don't leave my house much, but the 12 Mini isn't actually selling too well, the main cause of this most likely being how small the phone is for the price. And so with that being said, you need to know exactly what you're getting into before you buy the 12 Mini. But I mean, that's what this video is for, and I'm sure you'd like me to go a bit more in depth, so let's take a closer look at this phone, starting off as always with the design. In terms of design, obviously as I said before, this phone is minuscule, coming in at 5.4 inches to be precise, which is the complete opposite of the gigantic sizes that most premium phones these days come in. Now this does have a few benefits, the main one being that it makes one-handed use easier than ever, and you can reach all four corners of the display with your thumb, something that hasn't really been all that easy to do on most modern handsets. Combine that with the fact that this phone is also incredibly thin and light, and you've got an insanely convenient form factor that feels great to hold and use. Now as you've probably already noticed, aside from the small form factor, the 12 mini along with the rest of the 12 series sports a new design, or an old one, if you consider that it's heavily inspired by the iPhone 4, 5, 5S, and first generation SE, implementing completely flat sides instead of the curved edges we've seen since the iPhone 6. And it looks stunning in my opinion. No, this look isn't for everyone, but personally, I think that this is one of the most stylish iPhone designs ever implemented, so it kind of just boils down to personal preference. Although, I will admit that the 12 series don't feel as nice to hold as the previous generations. I mean, it's not a deal breaker by any means, but I have noticed that the edges slightly dig into your hand, but again, a bit of a personal preference thing here, and it can easily be fixed by installing a case which any reasonable, stable person would do anyway. We get the matte textured square bump that houses the dual cameras on the back, which we first saw on the iPhone 11, and the rest of the rear is comprised of a glossy glass finish, which allows for wireless charging and compatibility with the new MagSafe accessories. However, it is a mega hotspot for fingerprints, yes, pun intended, so again, a case would also come in handy here. Now the sides house the power and volume buttons as well as the mute switch, and on the bottom, there's a lightning port for charging along with the speaker and mic. Sorry, no USB-C yet. The speaker is quite small compared to the one on the larger 12, but it's still perfectly fine. Now on the front, we get the notched all-screen display, as Apple has been doing for quite a few years now. And as of today, this design is starting to feel a little stale, although the front of the iPhone 12 series has actually seen a change, even if it isn't visible, as these devices are no longer made of the traditional Corning Gorilla Glass, as that's been ditched for a material called Ceramic Shield. Ceramic Shield is a newly developed type of glass by Apple, which uses a crystallization process to allow nano-ceramic crystals to form in the glass, apparently boosting drop protection by up to four times. And this is a huge step up in terms of durability, and various drop tests across YouTube of the iPhone 12 series prove this. So durability is quite a strong point of this phone, but keep in mind that since the glass has been softened to allow better drop performance, it does scratch far more easily, so a screen protector is highly recommended here. And in addition, only the front is protected by ceramic shield, so the back will be a little more fragile, so again, I would still not recommend going caseless. The display itself doesn't see any compromise in terms of actual quality, because being a 
1080p OLED panel at 476 pixels per inch, everything looks extremely sharp and vibrant. However, when you're consuming content on the 12 mini, it's kind of hard to tune out how small the display is. So as I said before, your content will definitely feel cramped. And so this phone isn't ideal for YouTube or reading, and when gaming, I've hit the wrong button plenty of times because of how cramped the controls are. I promise it's not because I'm bad. But aside from the size of the screen, everything you're viewing will look amazingly sharp and crisp. And this is actually the same Super Retina XDR display used on the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, and 12 Pro Max, unlike the previous iPhone 11, which had a significantly worse display than on its more premium models released alongside it. As for the camera setup, we get two 12 megapixel shooters on the rear, and one 12 megapixel selfie camera. Despite the iPhone 12 mini's small size, its camera quality is pretty top of the line. The iPhone 12 series also brought a few new camera features, including a slight bump up in quality, and the ability to record video in 10-bit Dolby Vision HDR, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But for now, let's take a look at the main 12 megapixel wide camera. As expected, the standard photo quality on the 12 mini is phenomenal, and I mean, what else can I say? It's a new iPhone camera, of course it's going to be amazing. Everything is just so crisp and consistent, and other things like night mode and portrait mode will be equally stunning. Speaking of night mode though, night mode is now available on every camera, including the front facing one. Night mode was introduced on the iPhone 11, and it allows you to get much better images in low light scenarios. It was really really good on the iPhone 11, although it has seen minor improvements considering it's a newer device. Now as for the ultra wide lens, naturally a little bit of quality is lost in the image, but it's still useful when, for example, taking a group picture. Now while it has been handy at times, I I would actually rather have a telephoto lens, since I feel like I zoom in more than I zoom out. The 12 megapixel front facing camera is also just as great as the rear shooter, and can take excellent selfies, portrait and night mode shots, so you'll definitely get some social media worthy pics with it. In terms of video recording, boy are we in for a treat. The iPhone 12 series, including the mini, can now record in 10 bit Dolby Vision HDR at 30 frames per second, up to 4K. This basically gives you a much higher dynamic range and a broader selection of colours, and as Apple themselves said, it really does make your movie look like the movies, and it's pretty incredible how a smartphone this tiny and niche can film in something that Hollywood cameras can't. And it's not like, oh yeah, it kinda looks cinematic, I can see what they were trying to do. No, the cinematic footage on the iPhone 12 mini genuinely looks amazing. Apple have always hit it out of the park with iPhone video quality, and it will be really interesting to see how advanced this kind of technology will get in a few years time. Now additionally, it can still record in 4K or HD at 60fps on all cameras, but just not in Dolby Vision if you're shooting at 60 FPS, like the iPhone 12 Pro series. But despite this, it's still incredible if you don't record in Dolby Vision, so everything will still be as sharp and consistent as you'd expect a new iPhone camera to be. Performance is also a very strong point of the iPhone 12 mini. This year, we get the Apple A14 Bionic chip, along with 4GB of RAM. This is the same processor used in the iPhone 12 Pro series, so you're essentially getting the same performance as Apple's most expensive phones. Although the only difference is that the Pro series have an extra 2GB of RAM. But nevertheless, this is one of four new iPhones, so performance is pretty close to as good as it can get, and even four, five, six years down the line, it's pretty safe to say that this phone will still feel very fast. Swiping around the phone is smooth, apps open instantaneously, and gameplay is awesome. The A14 chipset will handle literally anything you throw at it, without it even lifting a finger, if it had fingers. So if you have even the slightest concern about performance on the iPhone 12 mini, then I can assure you that this isn't worth any of your worrying, because the 12 mini is among the best performing phones money can buy. Yes, it does fall behind the new Snapdragon AAA, processor, but in everyday usage, the A14 will feel just as fast. Now the iPhone 12 series are also the first Apple devices to get 5G connectivity, and while this might seem like big news, for the time being, there isn't really much to get excited about because at the moment, 5G is quite scarce, unless you live in a really urban area. But if you don't, you probably won't get the chance to use it for a few years time, and especially since I live in a somewhat rural town, I think I'll be using 4G for quite a while yet. Not that 4G is bad, since it's what you've been using for about a decade now, and it'll probably be around for the next next one or so too. But yeah, don't buy this phone purely for its 5G capabilities. Now coming back to slander the battery life a second time, as I said before, it's not great, but I'll go into a bit more detail. When I began using this phone, I was honestly quite nervous about the battery life, because I'd just come from an iPhone 11 which had a phenomenal battery life. And yes, this phone was a very significant downgrade in this department, because me being a pretty heavy user and relying on my phone to get a lot of things done, it's pretty hard for me to get through a full day on this thing. If there's a day where I don't use it too much and it's mainly on standby, it's actually more than usable, and I'll usually end the day with around 20%, but otherwise, when used 
moderately to heavily, it's mediocre at best. So if you use your phone a lot during the day, or you play intensive mobile games or something, then this is probably not the best phone for you. Now another thing I'd like to mention is just how fast the battery's health is degrading. I've only had this phone for about 6 months, and in that period of time, my battery's health has degraded from 100% to 93%, which was a huge shock for me to find out because my iPhone 11 stayed on 100% for the same period of time, so I really am quite disappointed and annoyed about this. But all in all, if you're a light to moderate user, you'll most likely be fine, but if you're a heavy user like me, you'll probably want to avoid this phone, or at least carry around a portable charger. Now the 64GB model will set you back 699 US, or 1199 AUD, but if you go for the largest storage variation, 256GB, it'll cost you 1000 US, or 1449 AUD. This isn't really excellent value for such a small phone, and it's why the 12 mini isn't selling too well. Although the 12 mini has premium specs, its minuscule size and below average battery life really make it feel quite overpriced. Hopefully, if they make a 13 mini or 12s mini or whatever they might call it, then hopefully they'll significantly reduce the price. If you don't want to spend that much, but you still want a compact phone, you're actually in luck because Apple is still selling the iPhone SE second gen for 679 AUD or 399 US. This phone is also quite compact like the 12 mini, coming in at a 4.7 inch screen size and is pretty great value for what it is. Although, keep in mind, it does adopt the older design with the home button, so if you'd rather keep the home button while still maintaining the highest end phone possible, this might be your best bet. Although the 12 mini is the more premium device, and the SE's battery life is pretty horrendous, much worse than the 12 minis. So if you want the most premium small phone, try and go for the iPhone 12 mini, but if not, the SE is still a solid option to consider, battery life aside, but I might talk about the SE in a separate video. So all in all, the iPhone 12 mini is the best phone for those who want top of the line specs, minus the bulky sizes, that the majority of phones these days come in. You're still getting a sharp display, phenomenal camera setup, and lightning fast performance, but as a result of the small size, the battery life has suffered quite a bit, as well as the size of the display. Plus, this phone has quite a high asking price for how small it is, and so now you probably know what I mean by having a love-hate relationship with this phone. So if you know exactly what you're getting into, and you're okay with the drawbacks I've just mentioned, then everything else about this phone will be superb, and you will absolutely love the 12 mini. And so this concludes my iPhone 12 mini review, six months later. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Textbury for more reviews, insights, and the occasional unboxing. Also once again, please follow my Instagram at tech double underscore spree and my Twitter at techspree1. Also the Discord server link is in the description, so so if you'd like to join our new community, then I'd love to have you over there. Thank you so much for watching, this is Tom with Textbury, and I'll see you next time.